Let me show you how to strip old decals on Monster Hobbies. Let's build it! Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. So you got a model kit with some old decals on it that you want to strip off? Well, I can show you how to do that really simply as long as your model has not got a, a coat of clear coat over top of your decals. But normally if you find an old model somewhere in like a, you know, maybe somebody gives you a big box of old models and they got decals on them, and they're right on bare plastic like this model, then it's really easy. So let's go down to my workbench and I'll show you how it's done. Welcome back down to our hobby bench. So here's a model kit that I built a long time ago when I was a kid back in the 80s. This is the the USS Hindenburg NCC 990. Now this is my own kind of design. Um, but as you can see, there's some like issues with some decal placement here. I built this back in the 1980s when I was young. And the reason why this is like blue and everything is because the old box lid used to actually show the model painted like that. And we didn't have the internet or weren't too observant back in the day to watch TV long enough to, you know, figure it out. So a lot of us relied on the old box art. Anyway, the reason why I'm thinking of stripping the decals off the Hindenburg, oh, and the underneath too, these I made, but they'll go too. Um, the reason why I'm thinking of doing this is because of this. Yeah, that's right, it broke a long time ago. So um, I also wanted to get this spacing right on the saucer because I mean, the name is longer than this, and I was looking over this too, and if you count all the letters and the space and everything, you get, I believe, 17, if I remember right. So now the thing is, this is the old saucer with the grid lines on it, and uh, you can center your decals using the grid spacing. Well, I didn't know that back in the day, and I just kind of eyeballed it as best as I could. And, I mean, it's not too bad, I guess, for spacing. But when you really count all the letters, you find that my center line is nowhere near the center. So, now how did I get the name Hindenburg to start back with? Back in the 70s, this was the decal sheet that you got with your kit. And, uh, 70s and 80s. And so, what we used to do is, we would take the letters out of the names and then cut them up with our hobby knife and then rearrange them so you could make your own ship's names like Hindenburg here. Same with the numbers. So you've got your your NCC here so we just cut out each individual letter and then pick out whatever numbers we wanted and then rearrange it and then put them back onto the model kit, water slide transfers, you know. So, here we are, 30 years later, and it's time to build this more like an adult. So, the trick to remove decals is so simple, it'll make your brain explode. Scotch tape. And this is really all this is, so get ready. So we take off a piece of scotch tape. And now here I've got this tool. It's a brandishing tool. It kind of looks like a spoon. My dad made this by heating up a metal rod and then hammering it on a vise, heating it up and hammering it, and then polishing off this end in the drill press. So all we need to do is you take your tape and you stick it right over your your numbers and I'm gonna rub it down with the brandishing here so that the tape sticks onto your decal and 
Now, when we take this and peel off the tape, it should peel off the numbers. One, two, three. Ha! <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> well, this video is in the scrapper. No, if it doesn't work, just be persistent. It should peel off. Wow, interesting. The 30 year booby trap. Hmm. Amazing. Okay, there. See, it's starting to take some of it off. So, it's not a total failure, it's just one of these things that we got to keep going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this for a little bit, and I am going to stop the camera so that I'm not trying to do this for 32 hours, and I'll show you a cleaned off saucer. Okay guys, I hate to be make a fool of myself, but you know, sometimes things like this happen. Okay, I was able to strip off um, the decals on a hood of a 53 Chevy with a piece of masking tape. It worked. I built my own models. I built them too good, even back when I was young. I cannot get the decals off here without having to resort to using my number 16 X-Acto knife and actually scraping carefully the decal off. So this is what I want to show you. What I had to resort to to undo my own work back in the past because I'm that good of a model builder, apparently. Okay, anyway. There. I scraped one off. <laughs> All right. If you have this much difficulty, do not try to undo my models. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to clear this off with my knife now and then um, show you how it looks. All right, so here I am back again. Now I scraped all these off and as you can see there's some black decal residue up there. So now I'm going to use my tape. And it still doesn't want to get out of there. Ah, anyway. <laughs> Okay, I think I know the reason why these stuck on so well. Back in the day, we had this stuff called Solva Set. I think they still make it. What it does is, in order to get your decal to fit perfectly on here, Solva Set melts the decal and the decal film, and it, it kind of, well, it melts it, and then it flattens it back out again on your model, right? So that it lays down perfectly smooth. The more solva set you put on, of course, the more it melts the decal. So I think what's happened is these old decals have actually melted and fused onto the plastic perfectly. That's why I'm having such a hard time getting rid of them. Anyway, so these are off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lightly wet sand it, just right where I scraped, just to make it a little bit better. And then I'm going to reapply the decals. This is just an experimental piece. One day I will professionally redo it, but I just kind of want to get decals on here because I'm testing a theory. Well, here we are back on our bench, and now I've actually removed as best as I can the uh, decal film here. And let's just zoom in a little. So I was right, actually. The Solva set actually melted the the decal into the plastic. Now, I know you guys can't really see it, but right here there's an actual maybe you can see it. There's an actual bit of a lump there. And that indicates to me that the decal actually burned into the plastic with all that solva set. And as you can see, I couldn't get it all out. But like I say, I'm not going to worry about it because Eventually, I'm going to repaint the whole thing with gray primer. I'm going to fix up the attachment points here. I was also maybe thinking of extending out this way. Oops, let me zoom this back. 
I was thinking of extending from this dot here, which is one of the lights, and going back this way, and then coming straight across and connecting there, um, to make, and then moving these off the saucer and back onto that uh, square piece that I'm going to make, or possibly make, just to give this thing a little more um, cargo kind of area back here. Maybe even like a little, well, shuttle bay or something. I don't know. But uh, like I said, I mean, I made this for fun when I was a kid. And it's not really going to do me too much damage to, to modify it. I still got Star Trek kits that I built when I was a kid, so this one isn't going to be too bad. But the reason why I called it the Hindenburg was, if you look where the warp drive engine is, once this gets attached, there we go. It's pretty much right over top of the bridge. <laughs> so if this ever exploded, it would take out the bridge, right? Kind of like the Hindenburg disaster of the past, but... You also note here that I... I put scratches in, in there and there. And there and there. On purpose when I was young. Just to give the saucer a little distinction. I guess when I paint this, it'll actually show more. But now, you may be wondering, okay, Trevor, why are you still filming this video if there's so many little mistakes and things like this in it? I mean, this is not one of your perfect videos, as usual. Well, the reason why I'm actually filming this like this is just to let you guys know that sometimes even the professional model builders have troubles with some of the kits, even if they're doing a quickie restoration or whatever. This is the nature of model building. This is why they say you need patience. So really, it's how do you adapt when something goes wrong? So I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that and <laughs> let you see that uh, the best answer is not really to lose your cool, but just maybe give it a rest for a day or so, maybe come back to it. And I know I'm not really doing that right now because, of course, I want to get this done. And the second reason is I'm doing this ahead of one of my other videos, and I know you guys will see this video way after you see the other one. It's because I'm really anxious. I found something. This was off the internet. I got this book because I've been collecting little Star Trek pictures and stuff from all the different tech manuals and video game notes and everything else. These are for how many decals I got off the AMT sheets and which one goes to which ship. There's first pilot, second pilot. This is a checklist so I can make all my ships exactly the same. The production value or production ship. Uh, but one of the things I found that I th stumbled across this actually and I thought it was interesting. Oh, these were decals I was trying to make a long, long time ago. And um, now there's guys that do this professionally. I was doing this with the decal film and a laser printer. But I found this. And I found this. Practically the same drawing. Um, this is from this uh, Shaw Design Research and Restoration. And this was for the real um, restoring the real movie enterprise, I believe. But this guy marked it all out. And the thing that's interesting about this and this is that this actually fits the grid pattern of the AMT model kit. So I'm going to redo my Hindenburg following his markings where they they go. And as you saw earlier, I had my Hindenburg lettering way down here and my numbers way out here. So now I'm going to move them all back up to where they're supposed to go. So, if you haven't seen my video on how to apply your decals, now is the time to do it. And I'm just going to apply the decals off camera and come back and show you what it looks like. But actually, before I do that, <laughs> I just thought of something. Um, here's the old decal sheet. This is a spare that I've had, and these are spare names as well. These ones have the USS on them. I am actually going to, for this, use the old, these old decals again. Just to, uh, for, well, for nostalgia, I guess. And then when I do them again the next time, I'm going to use the new AMT decals. But what I wanted to show you is my cuts. 
so this was the ship was originally the Hindenburg, right? So there's the H. So in hood, so you'd have to cut it up very carefully, close to that. So you get your H, and then I N D. Well, there's I N off Intrepid, and you can use that D. So I N D H I N D and E N. Uh, EN off the front of Enterprise and BUR right there off Excalibur uh, BUR and then a G and you got a G in Farragut and you got a G off Lexington so what I'll be doing is cutting these apart and then reapplying them onto my saucer and now I'm going up to do the decals. I haven't actually put the decals on because I cut them out really close. You want to cut the decals close so you get rid of the decal film. But here's what I wanted to show you with this. So there's a sketch and this has, if you look here, it's actually four and then four. But on our ship there's only uh, six. So we actually have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? That's what I mean to say. So we actually have six. So what I've done is I've just, I'm following this. So it's one ring, two ring, and then three ring. And the letters are off the third ring. So as you can see, one ring, two ring, third ring. And the tops will line up there. But for this, I've actually got the bottoms along there because it will fall off the ship if I move it down a little bit. But here's the thing. There's the center line here, and you have one, two, three, four. And as you can see, the N is on the four and all that. Well, here I've gone one, two, three from center. And I think that will actually look good with the three numbers. If I go a little further here, I do have the dash, it's just off to the side. It's too tiny. But let's say I went to the four. Now you're getting quite a quite a spread in between. So you can imagine, you know, that's sort of how wide this would be. And this font if you're wondering is called machine bt it's the original 1970s star trek font not from the tv show from amt so yeah but like i say you know you're okay moving this the 990 out you're now getting something like that so, I mean, you can see how far spread that looks, and it just, it doesn't look right. So, uh, you got to sort of go with aesthetics. So that's why I'm only going to go out three lines in either direction. Now, if this was a four-digit number, I would go out because then you'd have one to fill in the space. But I think that looks a lot better than how I had it originally. Because originally I was down on this line, one below, and I had them going off two... I guess these are radians, right? So I had everything compressed up to two radians. So that's what that was like. Only not so loppy, lopsidedy. <laughs> So now the new one will look like this. So I'm going to go upstairs in the sink that you've all seen a few times. And I'm going to lay this out. And then I'll get across with the Hindenburg, which should... Now, the original Hindenburg, I can still see where the scratches were. And it was right across there. And it actually was... Let's see. One, two, three. It was three across. So the new one will still be three across, but it'll be up here much like it is on that sketch. 
Okay, so now I'm going to lay this out and then I'll show you how it all ended up. So here I have Hindenburg all cut out from the decal sheet. And I've purposely left the decal film around here so that I can line it up properly. Um, usually you cut close. The only place I did that was at the edge of the U. And I'll do it on the edges of the G. But other than that, let's go up and put it on our model. So there it is. The USS Hindenburg redecaled with the original style decals. And how close does it match to our saucer illustration for the Enterprise? Well, here it is. Now, as you can see, it's a different font. Uh, the Enterprise lettering actually sinks in with the 1701, like right here. It's sort of inserted into the numbers. Uh, now, on ours, of course, we only have six instead of seven numbers. But I think I did a pretty good job with how it worked. Now, just move this up here. Let's rest my arm on the table. Okay. So now, if you can catch the grid lines, you can see that, like that Enterprise sketch, the center of the dash is right in the center there. And I spaced out my letters on a piece of paper before, and this is what I got for our spacing. So we got 14 letters, including that G, and it's the center line should be right behind the N and right in front of the D. And if you follow the center line up, I pretty much have it right there. It actually looks like I moved over a little. Maybe when I was squishing the water out of it. But it is close enough and Hindenburg should be straight across there although it looks kind of like it's doing a little bit of a curve maybe that's just my eyes here but anyway it all fits within the radiated outline outside lines you got a little bit of the U there and a little bit of the edge of the G coming over top of that line but that's the way it's supposed to go so there you are, the USS Hindenburg, with proper decal locations. Now, if I ever use this machine BT font again, um, I'm resting it on the bottom edge here. Originally, I put it the top of the letter to the top edge of this ring, but it spaced it kind of funny, and... Uh, it just didn't look right, so I actually peeled up each decal with water underneath and lifted it and shifted it up so the bottom would touch the bottom ring. Bottom of the letters would touch the bottom ring, and I think I got it pretty nice. So Barry, if you're watching this, I know you don't like this font, but I hope you can admit that it does look pretty good with uh, following the grid lines properly. So anyway, I will... Uh, get on with doing a restoration of this thing one day get that warp engine back on there but for now i just wanted to see how the decals worked following that sketch that the guy had and i think this pretty much wraps up this video Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where we got to put on the decals, redo the decals on a model that's 30 years old and broken. <laughs> now, I'm going to put this down here. And remember, sometimes things don't quite work out the way you planned, so keep being persistent and keep trying, and you could have results like that too. So, if you want to check out our website, please visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And if you would like to see me do a review of the 1983 USS Enterprise kit, please click up here. If you would like to see how we applied decals to that kit, please click over here. And if you'd like to see how to do some customization to make your own type of starship, click down here. And don't forget to subscribe to us right here. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video.